After what felt like an eternity of waifu supremacy, Ether Gazer's waifu drought has finally begun. Here to usher us into the new era is none other than the first member of the Husbando Bandits, Back Flowing Oceanus. Oceanus is a Hydro DPS unit. He belongs to the Olympus faction of characters and uses traces as the resource to execute his skills. His basic attack has six sequences. Every third sequence will trigger the Raging Waves passive while a clone is present, allowing them to perform coordinated attacks with Oceanus and refresh their duration. His dodge skill will summon a clone and grant him one trace if he is in possession of a trace when the dodge is executed, using a basic attack within one second after dodging will consume a trace to execute a judgment cut that refreshes skill 3's buff duration and lower the enemy's defense by 16% for 6 seconds. A clone is created each time Oceanus utilizes skill, one rushing river. All clones on the field will automatically attack the locked on target a short second after the skill is cast and have a duration of 6 seconds. If two clones created by this method already exist, using skill 1 will simply refresh their duration. Skill 2, Tide Surge, allows him to vanish amongst his clones and deals AoE damage to the surrounding foes. If he is in possession of two or more traces, when skill 2 is cast, absorb all clones on the field and for every clone absorb melee damage is increased by 6%, all clones are then recreated dealing damage to the surrounding targets. Skill 3. Great Confluence consumes all traces and absorbs clones within a certain range. For every clone absorb skill, damage is increased by 6%, and for every trace consumed, the damage dealt by the clones increases by 12%. His ultimate Boundless Seas delivers a powerful blow to the locked-on target. In addition, for every clone on the field, teammates' melee and water damage is increased by 6% for 10 seconds. If Cleansing Wind Enlil is on the team, the ultimate skill chain will increase the team's skill damage by 50% for 12 seconds and imprison enemies' hit for 3 seconds. Now that you have an idea of what his skills do, here is how we should play him. Since his dodge has a built-in defense shred, we will need to make sure we are dodging enemy attacks as often as possible. Unlike Athena, who doesn't want you to dodge, Oceanus wants to dodge as often as possible, because not only does dodging give a defense shred, but it also creates a clone, grants a trace and refresh skill, 3's buff duration. This means skill 1, and our dodge skill are going to be very important to our rotations, providing traces and clones to fuel skill 2 and 3. So our ideal rotation looks something like this. Use skill 1 to create a clone and gain a trace. Ideally get a dodge off to get another clone and trace in addition to the defense shred. From there do a couple of basic attacks while waiting for skill 1's cooldown to end. Once skill 1 is ready, use skill 1 to get our final trace and clone. Use skill 2 to gather the clones to our location and gain the melee buff for using skill 2 while we are in possession of 2 plus traces. And since we've just gathered the clones to our location with skill 2, we can then follow up with skill 3 and absorb all of them for the maximum damage output. Now I am sure at least one of you is screaming, but that's only 3 traces, why not wait until we have 4? And right you are, but we'll fix that issue once we get to sigils. For now, let's talk functors. When it comes to functors, his signature functor is obviously going to be his best in slot. TLDR, it grants 10% crit rate and allows him to accumulate stacks. Each hit from his basic attack adds one stack and skills add five stacks, once the stacks hits 20. A clone will be created by the functor and relentlessly attack the locked on target until the stacks deplete. Overall, an Oceanus with his functor is about 20% stronger than one without it. Your second option is Herald, Lay Airlaps. This functor works extremely well with him since the condition for triggering its effect is dodging, which our boy is really good at. At Tier 5 you're looking at a 50% increase in skill damage, but even at Tier 1 it is still a solid option. Herald, Melampus is just copium. 
Yes, it gives crit rate, but what's the point of hitting crits if you do no damage, even though Oceanus cannot trigger time fractures? I would still use the free-to-play Herald Hydra over Melampus because it's a stat stick, and teammates exist. Especially if you have Hera with a key, just go with Herald Hydra. It's a better version of Laylaps, albeit hard for him to trigger, hints teammates. For Sigils, Mermaid's Tear is mandatory since it's the only Hydro set we have, so slap it on slots 1, 3 and 5 for bonus Hydro damage, Hydro shred and some crit rate. For slots 2, 4 and 6 put on Decree of the Waves, this is going to give us that last trace we needed for our rotation, as well as bonus damage for our normal attacks and some crit damage. For enchantments, the standard DPS basics, like attack, skill damage, hydro damage, crit rate and crit damage are what you're going to be looking for. For warps, on slots 1 and 2 we want two power-up melee mods with one judge and one executioner. For slots 3 and 4 we want two EM flux and two telepathize force field ones. For slots 5 and 6 I decided to go with two kinetic mods because he is really good at knocking high health targets into modifier mode and 45% more damage is hard to pass on, and two Telekinesis Vector 3s. But you can swap out the Kinetic mods for two Evolution Particle 3s, for better neutral game damage, for your skill 3. For Ether Codes, 3 Yellow is going to be the option for DPS Oceanus. The first code reduce the range of clone absorption, but remember we're using skill 2 to gather the clones before absorbing them with skill 3. So not an issue, in return, we get a massive 36% increase to skill damage for absorbing three clones. The second code allows crits from our basic attack to trigger the clones to attack every three seconds. Lastly, the third gives us 18% more hydro damage if Oceanus and the clones attack the same target. In addition, if the clones attack the same target, we get a nice 12% hydro shred, so overall a solid lineup of buffs. When it comes to team comps, Oceanus paired with Enlil can be used with pretty much any other DPS character, simply because their skill chain is a massive 50% bonus skill damage to the entire team. To throw that into perspective, that's like having a tier 5 laylapse on all of your characters for 12 seconds every time they cast their skill chain. So for general play, Recurring Dreams or Hazard Zone Omega, you can just throw them on a team with any other DPS in the game and they will perform beautifully. For teams where Oceanus himself is taking the lead, Hera is a fantastic choice like always. Since Oceanus consumes all of his trace when casting skill 3, not only will Hera improve his damage, but she'll also save you 4 traces once every ult cycle. Heimdall on yellow code is a solid option. If you don't have Hera, she will provide additional attack power and crit rate for the team and a sizeable attack buff from her ultimate. But running Oceanus with Tidal Song Poseidon or counter Tide Leviathan is going to be the sweet spot for most players. Since his playstyle forces him to throw himself into incoming traffic whenever he sees a car, having a life insurance policy definitely does not hurt. Keep in mind we are also using warps that increase his damage base on his remaining HP, so keeping him healthy is a priority. In closing, Oceanus is a fantastic DPS unit, and one I would recommend to new players and veterans alike. By now, some of you may be feeling the weight of defeat from floor 19 and 20 of the new Hazard Zone. So consider picking up Oceanus, the husband of bandit and show those Vespains the true meaning of war. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
一気にかかってこいよんじゃあそろそろ本気と行こうかな響け長き白昼の始まりに風よせい父上今だ時間の無駄だったな。